Hello and welcome to September's Video Diary. The keen viewers among you would have noticed that we didn't do a video diary for August because we were simply too busy in the workshop to have any time to do any filming. So we're making up for it this month. We're going to be doing a walk around of the workshop as per normal, showing you what we've got going on, what we've got going out the door, as well as what we've got coming in. We're also going to be doing our top tips with some little secrets that we're going to reveal, as well as all the other good stuff. Cool, yeah, so since we last spoke, we've, uh, we've been out and about a little bit as well. Um, we've managed to get up to a track day at Brands Hatch. Yeah, yeah. Stu finally got back on track again, which is nice after his wrist was spanned. Yep. And, um, well, no, wait, you didn't actually race, did you? No. We, we got out on track. We got out on we track. We got out on track. Yeah. I got, got out on track. track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we both went out there. Of course, the student didn't make it. No. Actually, it was a bit of a mare the track day, to be fair. You didn't miss too much. I didn't miss too much um, at all, no. But it was nice because I actually got to use the TD for the first time. So mm, our track yeah. bike, I tended to use the PCO one, sat behind Stu. Mm -hmm. um, it was nice to take it out on, on one of the other bikes. And uh, we've got some interesting news and some projects with we that have, as well yeah. going forward. So we've actually got a lot more on the, the work run and race track side, um, which we'll allude to a little bit later and potentially mm -hmm. go into a bit more on our next video diary. New t-shirts. New t-shirts. And yeah. uh, these t-shirts were also up with us at the Goodwood Revival, which we went to this month as well which was very, very cool. We were getting yeah, some bare bone was... distribution up there who sell some cool brands like Age of Glory, who we've done the shirts with, as well as Kytone, New Doxy, and Wheels and Waves. So yeah, it was a really good, really good weekend. It was, out, a, wasn't it? It, was, a, it was a lovely day out. It, was a lovely it really day was out. a lovely day out. Uh, we've also got some bits in the fabrication room. We're continuing to upgrade and put some new parts in the fabrication room. We've got a nice welding table in the background that we're going to be assembling this month. I'm really looking forward to getting on with that because we've got some exhaust systems to be making. So that's something new to us as well. Obviously, I've got the experience to be able to make the exhaust systems, but up until now, we haven't had the projects to no, do it. No, we're, we're, so that's a really exciting progress for us. Yeah, we're growing sort of bit by bit steadily, you know, as, as the business sort of allows us to grow and yeah, getting the, the fabrication room up and running is going to allow us to do a lot more in-house and be able to put our own spin on things much better. So I think that's pretty much us for this quick intro, we'll, um, we'll let Shoot Stu over to the workshop. Hello and welcome to September's workshop walk around. I'm going to be doing a little bit of detail on what we've got on the ramps and how we're getting on with them. So, starting off with the 1150GS. As you know, this bike's been with us for a little while now. We've had a few problems sourcing some parts due to the age of the bike, but they've eventually turned up and we've got them fitted and we are really, really pleased with how it is going. So all of the electrics are done from the front headlight to the um, auxiliary lights. That is all done. Just got some final wiring to tidy up before we can put the tank on. We've got the PIA lights integrated with the original wiring loom, so they come on and off with the high beam, low beam. A nice little touch that makes it easier for the customer to use, but also sort of gives it like that OE feel. The PIA lights have been detailed by our painters. As you can see, this is now the green that is on the fuel tank. It's a nice little touch that at a quick glance you wouldn't notice, but it's a more detailed glance. When you have a second look around the bike, you'll see that the green matches the two. As well as that, we've also fitted some of the new Unit Garage Cali rear bags. They are such a good quality bag. Fully waterproof. They clip straight on the unit garage rear rack system, which fits your BMW, whether it's from R90, GS, 1150 GSA, R12R. They work on all the same systems. So you like the bag, it can go on any one of your BMW bikes, no matter what you've got. Working with the unit garage rear rack system, it's just a go-to product. We love them, hence why we use them. So, looking forward to getting that one done and dusted because it's been here for a little while now and we really would like to get it off the ramp and get it back to the customer, but we're on the final leg on that one. So, moving on to customer that's asked for an airbox removal to be done. We've got the signature PCC air filter's been fitted because it's been done in-house. The customer's also gone with an LED front headlight upgrade. We fitted a Denali. Unfortunately, just like the rear shock absorbers, one of the parts of the bike that really let itself down is the headlight. The Denali headlight sorts that out by doing the ultimate upgrade, which really does make nighttime, daytime. It's a really good product. When paired with the full beam loom, it just lights up the road. It's what we recommend. And it's nice and easy to fit. We're gonna go into a little bit more detail in that in a separate video. Keep an eye out for that. As well as the Denali headlight and the airbox removal, the customer's also gone for a lighting upgrade. We've gone with the Kellerman Atto front and rear light package. 
paired with the rhizoma under tray, three in ones on the rear and standard, standard indicator lights on the front. They take away the bulk of the stalk indicators on the front and the rear. They're super bright and they work fantastic. Once again, it's another one of the products that we stand by. Go to video, a uh, go to product. There is also some videos for you to look at there that goes into a little bit more detail on that. Keep an eye on our feed. So, another one of the big builds that we've got a load of the good stuff back for is this one. All of the anodizing, as you can see here, has come back. We've got the front end ready to go in. We've got some paint work back. We've got the leather work being processed and all of the major stuff like the airbox removal and the rapid by Kivo loom, that is all done. So we're now just fitting the real bling stuff. The paintwork, as I mentioned, has come back from our painters. This is an in-house developed color. The bottle green with a little bit of the gold flake in it. We've done our very best to make sure that we can match the paintwork to the stitch. We can do whatever seat you want to do. So as well as having all of the swatches in-house, we can have anything made seat wise, whether it be a double stitch, a cross stitch, pleated, quilted. We do make sure we work very, very hard to make it as bespoke as possible. As well as the anodizing, the paintwork and the leather, one of the go-to products that we're also gonna be fitting on this bike is gonna be the Wilbur's Shock Absorber. We do wax lyrical about them, but that's purely because they are that good. To give your R90 the right feel that it needs to have for the road and to give it that confidence, to give you that confidence to ride your bike how you want it to ride, the Wilbur's Shock makes the biggest difference to that. So, with that in mind, I think that covers everything for this month's workshop walk around. I'm really looking forward to get this one done. That one's nearly on, the, that one's, apart from the lighting, we're pretty much there. And the 1150 GS is another one that we're really looking forward to getting out the door. Look forward to seeing you in October. So the biggest changes and developments on the website in this month is basically the fact that we've now got our capsule merch collection. So we've hooked up with Age of Glory, a brand from France, uh, run by Seb, who is a super cool guy who does a little bit. I think he runs the Flat Track uh, French Association, which is very, very cool. He's been creating lifestyle and riding gear for the past few years now. It's all to the best quality and it's something that we've been looking to do for a little while. When Seb contacted us or we contacted him through the distributors Barebone, um, it looked like we could put a project together and he has created what will be a small capsule of three shirts, two neck tubes and two pins, half of which is up on the website at the moment and we're expecting the other t-shirts to be landed very shortly. So we've got the, the work shirt, which has got our, basically our PCC details. This is done in the Age of Glory signature style. If you go onto their website, you'll see quite a few other um, garments that they release that have a very sort of similar um, theme. We've also then got the Ren and T-shirt, which is our PCO one. We were very keen to make sure that our merch was very much us focused. We didn't just want generic BMW T-shirt. All of the shirts will feature and all the other garments will feature things that we have actually produced in the workshop. The third T-shirt called the Alpin will have a PCO tool on the front and that should be out sometime in the next month. So if you head over to peercitycustom.com, we really appreciate um, the support. You know, this is something that means that you can wear this in your local car park or wherever you're going to be hanging out with your bike, any of the bike shed shows, any local bike shows to you. And it really helps us um, sort of put our name out there as well. So it's one of those things where you can walk around looking cool, but also it's helping us out as a brand at the same time. So head over to the website and uh, pop on your basket and check it out and go from there. So I just wanted to go through some of the finishes that we do on the front of the R90s. A huge amount of people ask us about the full blackouts that we do now. On the R9T, we black out as much as we possibly can on a lot of the bikes that we do. Uh, that involves a couple of different processes. It could be powder coat, paint, or anodizing. I just wanted to have a quick chat about the difference between the anodizing and the powder coating. So specifically, we use anodizing as much as possible. You'll find that you're able to get a much cleaner, crisper finish in and around the real intricate parts. If you imagine that anodizing is much more like etching the top layer off and then dyeing the metal, Whereas powder coating is a covering. So if you've got something a bit more intricate, you're basically filling it with things and you won't get that same uh, detail and sharpness. So the, the biggest advantage of powder coating is that you can get different finishes, as you can see here. So anodizing kind of lends itself to one particular finish. You can either get a bright finish if you then polish it first, but realistically it's gonna be very samey. Whereas powder coating, you can go for different colors and, and looks and textures. We, there are certain parts on there but you will only be able to powder coat. As an example, the fork lowers um, and certain other different metals. The cylinder head covers is another good example because 
Um, what you want to do on there is get like a really nice robust finish and you want to make the finish match the rest of the engine. So anodizing just isn't going to work for that because it's a cast piece. So with the, um, the full blackout on the front end, some of it can be quite in depth. The uh, fork uh, yokes, top and bottom, are held together by the steering stem, which will need to be pressed out. It's not a quick fix, that one. However, for quick fixes, if you look at things like the seat brackets, if you look at things like the front mudguard brackets, if you look at things like the exhaust rows, you can basically take those off in minutes, a couple of bolts on each, basically, send them off to your local finishers, and when they come back, it can, it can quite quickly transform how the bike looks, and it'll start to give you those uh, touches that when you turn up in the car park, your bike isn't going to look exactly the same as the next R19. It's really not as hard as you think. Just make sure you contact the suppliers first so that you can, you can have a quick chat and make sure that you're going down the right route with each one. That's it for September. We're sat here in our new area. We've finally got a TV in, which is not just the black outline. Yes, we are progressing. We are. Um, and yeah, that's all for September. October's going to be, uh, it's going to be another solid month. We've obviously got a new thing on the horizon. Yeah, we've got a new thing, yeah. We've got a new thing coming in, which is going to be a very fun project moving forward. It's going to allow us to have something for the road and for the track, but we'll give you a little bit more detail on that in October. Uh, we are fully stacked for October and November, so um, we're discussing December and 2022 now. So plenty more to tune back in for. And yeah, keep an eye. That's pretty much. Check out the website, pissytocustom.com, and obviously give us a shout at any point or you leave any comments and stuff below, and we'll, um, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And buy yourself some new t shirts. Hello, and I'm going to give you. <laughs> as your keen viewers. Uh, I'll start again. <laughs> do you want me to? <laughs> no, I do.